are consistent. And so we provide some stuff that keeps them consistent and doesn't mean they have to be full-time social media marketers. But the stuff they put out on their own, their unique stuff, their stuff that's personal, the videos that they're making themselves, that's the golden ticket. Hello and welcome to Keeping It Real, the podcast where we talk to the most interesting people in real estate. And we got a good one. We actually have a first for Keeping It Real. This is actually two guests. So we are going to talk to Darren about a variety of real estate related topics from 2006 to present. We're going to talk about changes uh, to real estate SEO. We're going to talk about web technology, what CRMs work best. We're going to talk about Going from a franchise to going independent, we're going to talk about the NAR lawsuit, and then we're going to bring in his marketing director, Lisa, and we're going to talk about rebranding your entire real estate business and what that entails, something that frequently people have to do as they grow. So this is going to be an excellent episode. We hope you stick around. Keeping It Real is brought to you by Real Geeks. We'll talk about more of them, more about them later. Uh, I'm Chris Whitling, VP of Marketing at Real Geeks. And with that, Darren, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Darren Woodard. I'm from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm uh, about to hit 50 years old, three kids. Uh, I've been selling real estate for 20 years in uh, July of this year will be 20 years. Nice. So you've, you've seen it all. This is going to be a good episode. Like we were, we were talking before we hit record and uh, you know, you've definitely seen some evolution through SEO and I understand like uh, you know, through the franchises you're part of with or part of, and then like the technology. And so like, I'm looking forward to digging through some of the, uh, some of the gyms that you might have in your head. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's just start with how you got into, got into real estate, because this is also seems like an interesting story. Yeah, I was fresh out of college. Um, and I have a finance and economics degree. Um, uh, what I realized is that I needed to move to a different area other than Myrtle Beach to really get in the career I wanted to, to be in. Uh, my wife now, at the time, her and I got serious. She wasn't going to leave. So I was like, oh, I guess I'm going to have to figure it out down here. So I started bartending. And uh, while well, I was bartending all through college, I kept bartending. And uh, a gentleman came into the uh, bar one day that I've known since we were young and and told me he made a bunch of money in real estate. And it was January. And I couldn't believe it. Um, so I was like... Uh, Went and took the courses and uh, I signed up. Awesome. And so, you know, Myrtle Beach, especially back then, although uh, it sounds like it's becoming a little bit less seasonal now. Maybe you can fill us in on that, but definitely a, a vacation spot. So January would be, I'm assuming, low season. January, it's, it's, it's odd. It's more of a low season now than it was back then because we had a lot of snowbirds. That, that were coming down here and they would buy a condo, rent it out during the summer, use it in the off season. Now these people are moving down here. So they're not really coming right during the holidays to, to find their forever home. So it's actually a little slower now in the off season than it used to be as far as real estate goes. I mean, Myrtle Beach itself, I mean, it's expanded with, you know, restaurants and entertainment for people year round. But as far as the real estate market goes, it's a little slower for about six to eight weeks there during the winter time. So talk to me about getting started because it sounds like, it sounds like, you know, you, um, you were pretty SEO aware. Uh, and so maybe I'm, I'm curious, like what was your, when you first got started in real estate, like how were you starting to generate leads and when did you start to think about online marketing? I was door knocking. Uh, and I, back then it was a, it was a reverse directory book. So that's how we got like phone numbers. Now people circle prospects. So we would go find a street and find all their home phone numbers and, you know, dial them up and see if they were interested in, in selling the property. Um, didn't really have much, uh, as far as lead generation back then. Um, you couldn't buy leads like you can today and just get in there, uh, instantly. So, uh, one Sunday I was blowing up open, open house, uh, balloons and I met a gentleman that had a local real estate magazine here um and the local real estate magazine um to get into the ad i would actually drive 60 miles putting uh the magazines in walmarts and grocery stores um uh, to pay for my two-page spread and i still got uh you know got some really good clients out of that magazine um didn't know much about the web space but this gentleman also was uh, building wordpress websites and he was building them uh neighborhood specific packaging them with postcards and everything. So I bought a package for a couple neighborhoods, a couple different packages. And, uh, but through that, he, he told me, Hey, you need to, uh, you need to start, uh, 
writing more content and really getting this boosted up. So I actually had him build a site back then. It was your home at the beach.com. And I just started putting up, going around, taking it, you know, entryway signs of the neighborhoods and typing content and linking them together. And uh, I'll, ne- I'll never forget the first time I got that first lead was the most exciting day uh, in, in real estate for sure. That's awesome. Oh, I mean, you, there, okay. You mentioned a couple of things really, really interesting there. W- what year was that? Do you remember? 2006. 2006. Like the first seed probably didn't come until 2007. Okay. So I, I think it's like pretty early in the internet game. And you're talking about, you, you mentioned like building specific content for uh, specific neighborhoods, which local SEO was just in its like infancy in 2007. Yeah, we already built out there's, in our area. There's basically like 12 little cities or towns. Once you build that out, what do you do next? Right. So you, you, you just start hitting on the communities that people uh, are driving through and they know the neighborhoods. Right, right, right. So was the the guy that was building the website, he was the guy that kind of directed you towards like building like I guess at that time, like individual blog posts for neighborhoods. Uh, no, they were content pages, um, kind of okay. like we do today. Uh, so, um, and it had a good structure to it. He, uh, he always had a good structure to his website. But I would go on uh, forums. And, I, you know, that's actually where I met like Jeff Manson and stuff like that yeah. a long time ago was through through forums that just we just shared ideas uh, about how to, you know, make it rank. Awesome. Awesome. And so eventually you got there uh, and got that first lead in uh, in 2007. How many pages had you built? Like how much time and effort had you put in before you got that first lead? I had an advantage because this was before kids. So, I mean, I would, I mean, work about 80 hours a week, uh, probably 60 of them on the website and 20 of them on, you know, uh, just uh, taking people around and showing them property or learn about neighborhoods, door knocking. And you were doing that 60, 20 split, like before you were getting leads from your website, or is that like after the leads started flowing? It was before. It was before. Wow. So you were investing, like believing that this channel was going to yield results. Yes. Yeah. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So what happened? Like, wh- what was the next? So you, you believed, right? Like, it's, it's almost like starting a technology company. Uh, you started producing a ton of content. Uh, they started ranking. You got that first lead. Now what happened? I worked it. Nice. Went and sold, went and sold a home. Uh, not off the first one, but probably off the first five, I went and sold a home. And then they started coming very quickly after that. Um, I used to rank number one for Myrtle Beach real estate. Obviously, it's tough to rank for that these days. Um, yep. You know, so, uh, but it, yeah, got my first buyer's agent in 2008 as a direct uh, result of these leads coming in. So at that time, I was really picking up listings. I uh, had, a, as an individual agent, about 40 listings. It's 2008. Uh, to me, it was 40 headaches. Uh, you know, nobody's houses were selling unless you had a, a, a bunch of foreclosures or something like that, or you're really an expert in short sales. So uh, the buyers is where we were really uh, thriving at that time. Well, we we almost have to stop and, and be like, okay, wait, hang on. So you, the your business is forming and taking off during 2008. So what's happening with your lead flow as, I mean, the rest of the economy is melting down. Like, I'm so curious. Oh, it was great. Uh, the buyers were coming in uh, hand over fist and we were really, uh, really taking off. Actually, I went from being, I think it was 250 agents at the company that, that I was at at the time. And I was probably number 150 before 2008. In 2008, I was the number one agent of the 250 because I had all the buyers. People that were selling 40 million a year were down to selling 3 million a year. Those people were mostly s- selling through like sphere type situation uh, and like referrals. And I'm guessing the, the, the 2008 meltdown like kind of interrupted that. But you had this whole other source of leads you developed. That's, that basically- yeah, the, the ones that were doing the big the bulk of the business in 2006, 2007 were oceanfront condos in our market. And I mean, they're pretty much order takers. You just I mean, they didn't have to show the property. It was an investment. They knew what building they wanted. They knew what stack they wanted, which is the unit, you know, like units that within the building. And they were to just write up contracts. It was unbelievable. But I didn't get a piece of that. Right, right. What was the what was it like working a lead that you generated compared to the order taker? Right. So if the order taker is just like, oh, OK, the person already knows exactly what they want. I'll write up the contract. What what was different about what you were doing? I mean, it's a little bit more work. 
But in our area, it's changing a little bit now because a lot of people here that live here because it's grown so much, they're buying here now. But back then, somebody would come here for a weekend or possibly even a week and they wanted to go home with a contract in their hand. So it was it was a, a good lead. Uh, you just had to work and show them more properties than the order takers. Right, 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 right. Excellent. Okay, so what was the lead flow like? You know, you, you started, you got the first one in 2007. Obviously, 2008's happening. You you insinuated that it, it's a lot uh, and that you started having to hire people for your team. Like, what what did that, what did that flow look like? And do you remember, like, what, you know, what you were ranking for and, like, where on what, what search results? We were ranking pretty much... Uh, Bing didn't exist. We were ranking Google and Yahoo in the top three for pretty much everything in the Myrtle Beach area. Back then, we didn't look at the neighborhood size. We just looked at the main phrases, Myrtle Beach Homes for Sale. You know, Conway is another one of our markets, Conway, yep. Real Estate, some of these different areas. Um, but we were ranking very well and getting a lot of traffic, a lot of leads coming in. But it's if you get that many leads coming in, unless you back then you didn't have action plans or drip campaigns or whatever you want to call them. Uh, so you were uh, if you got more than one a day, they, they very quickly uh, get on top of each other and it's uh, hard to keep up with. I really want to talk about this, uh, but I want to keep pulling the SEO thread here for a second because that that right there, uh, I think, is a huge shift in technology. Um, so you mentioned that at some point, Google, you were hit with a Google penalty and all these sites were, all, or your website was built on WordPress at the time. Uh, talk, talk me through like when that happened and what happened. Yeah, we, we've been hit with a few, um, and changed the, uh, structure of our site or, uh, switch some things around. One of, I don't remember the name. Some of them called penguin panda. There's all kinds of names that were thrown out there here, you know, but we, uh, we would switch whether we do a, a total URL, uh, uh, and do three or one redirects to that new URL, um, but with a WordPress website, you had to go to an HT access. It wasn't as easy as now. You just build the URL structure. We used to have to go in there and put all that HT access to redirect to a new page. So we didn't take a penalty on having uh, 404s um, and and those. Um, so we've been hit with several. One of them was for like link swapping uh, with realtors across the country. You used to just email somebody, hey, hey man, I'm in Myrtle Beach. You're in Washington State. I'll put a link on my site. And, and that was great uh, for a while there. Um, and then, and then we took a hit and we switched URL structures. And that's when we came over to to you guys to really uh, switch things up because we really liked, uh, and I say we, it was mostly me, but we had, at that time, I think I had two buyer's agents and I uh, had somebody that actually built out my uh, Real Geeks page um, that, I, that I found uh, online and uh, completely changed it up because uh, now we had... Uh, and at that time, I guess Zillow and, you know, some of these others, Realtor.com started ranking very well for the big names. So we switched it up to the long tail uh, search results and went more communities. Right. OK, so I think for the, the maybe the non-technical audience, like maybe we'll do a little bit of exposition here. So I think one thing that's important to call out is, you know, and if you listen to our Scott Vancia episode where we're talking about Google My Business, he was talking about how Google doesn't necessarily tell you what they like and what they don't like at any given time. And you try and do the right thing. But I think, you know, for your business, like many, you know, people that are trying to drive traffic through SEO, you are trying to, you're trying to, you're trying to generate leads. And so link swapping with other realtors around the country was a really great tactic until it wasn't right. And Google would probably say things like, yeah, those links weren't editorially given, um, and that's what we really want, which is, you know, obviously cause the penalty. Yeah. 20 pages, 20, pa 20 page penalty, uh, right. to be exact. Cause you go searching for yourself and oh, there I am on page 21. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. And then that causes a big, uh, you know, a big rethink, uh, walk me through the change, you know, so, you, so you said that moving to real geeks, you like the, the URL structure. Right. Um, maybe for people that don't really understand what you're talking about, like, what do you mean by that? Well, the URL structure, a lot of times that's part of SEO is you look at a URL structure, whether it has an MLS or an address. So what I, what I liked is the address URL structure that it actually takes physical address in there because if somebody, if you're driving by a house sign, a lot of times you don't have the phone number of the agent or the information there. You're not going to get their website off of the uh 
off of the signs, but you do know the address. So you go home and you plug in the address to Google or, uh, you know, Yahoo at the time. And, and we would pop up for all those addresses based off of the site map that we built with all those addresses in it. Right. Yeah. So I think Bob McCraney has brought this up as well. Um, this is a, a something that Kevin programmed into the Real Geeks platform. And so if you look at, if you do a search on many MLS platforms, what you'll see is you'll see like a URL that looks something like, you know, the place you're searching.com slash like query equals, and then like whatever you, you know, typed in there. And Google basically ignores everything after that question mark, right? So they want to see like actual page names. And so what, what real geeks does is it'll say something like, you know, you know, your website.com slash like search in this area slash like that specific address, right? So that, that search query is actually in the URL, which makes it a valid page that Google can then index essentially. And also put it, uh, going into the title tag with it as well. What I was looking for for a site back then was also one of the things I had with my WordPress was an embedded MLS. Back then, Real Geeks had a, and now there's a lot of providers out there to have what you call a static MLS. Uh, I think the dynamic MLS was the one that is basically a frame that, that yep. would pop up. It was their content, their information. It wasn't built into your, your website or your platform. So that was huge too. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This, this is fun. We're like, I mean, fun for me. Anyway. Uh, we're, getting, <laughs> we're, we're getting into some nuances of some, some geeky stuff here. Uh, but yeah, when you do one of those iframes, it's the content's not on your site. It's on someone else's site, you know, versus like having it natively. So this is a big, a big selling point for like a, a like, you know, real estate sales platform, uh, you know, something like real geeks compared to, you know, like WordPress, depending on the way the integration's done, which it, it can still, it can still struggle. So I know that you've used, so I, I want to take like a little tangent here. Uh, I know that you've used several technology platforms and I'm curious, you know, what you think the differences are between like real geeks and Sierra and like where you think they, they play best. That's a good question. Uh, because I, now building the company that we're building, I'm, I deal with technology. Uh, and I was just on the phone with, uh, before this call with somebody out of, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, one of our offices there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he's, uh, plugging in Sierra into, we're using follow up boss for a CR for a CRM. And he's having a little difficulty with the, the, the API and stuff on there. So I, I'm sure we'll get past it, but real geeks, we've got, probably 10 of our teams or realtors that have real geek sites. And I haven't had a problem with that yet where it, it uh, you know, plays very well with, uh, and I noticed you guys over the last two years uh, have really uh, uh, stepped it up when it comes to playing well with other platforms that agents might want to use versus just trying to be a catch it all. Hey, this is all we got. This is what we use. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, we have a good relationship with follow up boss. Um, you know, their founder Dan's here in Austin, uh, you know, so there's good connective tissue between the, between the companies. And I think the ideology of the company in terms of like those open APIs is, is very similar. So there's sort of like a natural, a natural fit with us. Um, but I guess I'm still curious, you know, like kind of going back to the, I'm happy to hear that the, the integrations work really well. Uh, but in terms of like the baseline technology, like getting, you know, uh, like usability for the consumer, like the end user, uh, or like its ability to rank, you know, like what are kind of the pros and cons of the, of the different platforms? And you don't have to say anything nice for our benefit. I'm like kind of probing <laughs> here because I'm, I'm collecting consumer research right now. <laughs> well, no, about two years ago, I, um, started looking at Sierra and, you know, the, some of the stuff that they had was a, a little, a little refreshed for, for search engines and stuff, pages and, and posts and stuff are a little more difficult to structure, um, you know, versus just popping it up there in your editor or putting it into a notepad and then and stripping out the code, sticking in HTML and, and putting it exactly how you want it. Both of them do exactly what you want. I think the structure is a little bit more cumbersome, but it is able to be figured out with Sierra. But what, what I find out is, uh, I mean, out of the 10 people that we have that even have a real geek site, only two of them have built out their site They're Most of them are using it for uh, lead generation through Google PPC. Ah, 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 I got it. I got it. So is Sierra just making that a little bit easier right now to do the SEO side of it? 
No, I think the the, the, the the pages just come out a little bit cleaner. So I actually had somebody customize that you guys recommended customize our top two real geek sites. So my partner, Jeff and I, um, uh, John, Jonathan and Mike that came out here, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, they met him as well. We've, we both started at the same time. We used to be, uh, we were friends and, uh, just, uh, swapping ideas. Now we uh, own this company together. So those two sites have a lot of age on them. So we have two real geek sites that generate for, for 250 agents, basically, um, in, in five different states. Awesome. Yeah. Super interesting. Um, Okay, I want to pick up on a thread that you had mentioned earlier, which is once the leads start coming in, you you've got to do stuff with them, right? As you do, right? Uh, yeah. And that, like in the old days, you know, in the old days, two thousand seven, uh, there wasn't really the technology to do like automated follow up, and then there is now. And so I'm I'm super curious because it also sounds like you had a a scale problem. Like leads are coming in, and then you're quickly overwhelmed if you get, like you said, more than two a day. So knowing that you want more than two leads a day, how do you, like, how has technology changed this process for you? Since 2007, I'd say about uh, two years ago, I really started getting serious about this. And it's, so we started this company and then in 2013, we looked at each other and said, Hey, we're just going to, you know, and then the company's running great. Let's start a little a team each. So we started, we were a team at the previous company. We started this company and then we decided to go out, out on our own to do that, but it's always been a problem with, uh, you know, many people have a drip campaign. The problem with drip campaigns, you're just bothering somebody. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then I've looked at funnel marketing and trying to do that and figure that out. And that was a headache too, um, because it's, uh, getting the thing to shut off and, and, and do different things has always been, has always been an issue. I'd say over the past two years with, uh, the follow-up boss integration and then going out and getting someone to do the action plans, setting up the automations so that the automations, uh, turn it off and hand it over. Um, it's really been a game changer. And then there's a couple other things that we've, we're, uh, integrating now, uh, when, you know, with the company to, to help, uh, people get burnt out on leads. They don't want to call, uh, a hundred leads to get two yeses. So my thing is I tell the agents, let's get 10, 10 leads that five of them are going to be raising their hand. Gotcha. Talk to me about the Talk to me about like what your team does specifically, like when a lead comes in, you mentioned action plans and I'm guessing that's a follow-up boss, you know, like what's the, what's the actual workflow look like? Uh, well, we use uh, texting Betty and tied into the action plans. And so, uh, and what texting Betty does is basically uh, it's, we're getting about a 65% response rate on these and it's very subtle text. It's not just hammering them with information. It's, it gives them the, the action plans that we have actually, gives them a hook and then tells them, if you don't want any of this, tell me to stop. And, uh, and, uh, most of the time they don't say stop. They, 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 they engage and tell you what they're looking for or they're a year out or something. So if they're a year out, we've got action plans for that. If they're, uh, if they're, uh, really, really, really cold, we've got action plans for that. If they're, if they're an active client or whatever you're working with them right now, we, uh, flip them around and stick them into another technology, um, that, that, uh, is a little better than like the MLS search that we, that we currently use. What's that technology? Uh, we're using real scout. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. You know, it's, it's interesting that you, uh, you kind of mentioned that you almost invite the unsubscribe. Like this was a big topic of conversation when, uh, 10 DLC was happening, like less, maybe less last October. Uh, where a lot of real estate agents thought that, you know, having to include that stop language was, was going to, you know, hurt their ability. But it sounds like, you know, it sounds like you kind of have like, the right marketing mentality of like either the leads, right. And the message is right. And it's, they're going to keep engaging or, or it, it wasn't going to work anyway. Yeah. And now we've gotten to a mentality uh, where people used to just keep them in their database and keep sending them stuff until they tell them to stop. Well, these ones engaged. No, I'm not interested. Uh, my sister lives next door or something like that. So we, what we do is we stick them into trash. We don't delete them. We stick them into trash. And then if they engage again through going back on our website, we got a big back to website uh, thing and then an auto nurture through real scout. And then, and then, and then we really bring them back by auto nurturing them uh, through that program. Right. So even though your folder is called trash, you are sort of like uh, the Greg Harrelson. There's no such thing as a dead lead. 
uh, in your case, it's like they're just hibernating. And there's a good chance that they'll go back on the site through remarketing or something like that that we do that brings them back into our world. And then when they are ready, we'll engage with them again. Talk to us about the remarketing. That is a very interesting topic. Well, there's many things that remarketing uh, can do. Uh, you can do it through whether you've got somebody that's doing your PPC. Right now, I'm using Asterisk Marketing for that. Um, and they, they can do the remarketing and stuff through there. Real, Real Scout has a Facebook pixel that sends stuff out there. We've got AdWorks that we use that, that we've got uh, some things going out through that, just really bringing the brand forward. And then when they get back into... Uh, clicking onto your website, like I said, the back to website uh, action plans really, uh, that one's getting a really good response rate, about 45%. Nice. What happens inside that action plan? Like paint this paint this picture for people that might be listening. Uh, well, when they go back to website, that's one of my favorites. Um, yeah. So the back, to web, the, the back to website action plan actually engages them in there with the, you, you looked at this house, what, what uh, piqued your interest, you know, open-ended question like that. It's through texting Betty. So they, they respond a lot quicker to text because the average person probably gets 200 emails a day. 95% of them are, are junk, but you're going to end up in that junk as well. Um, so we, we we uh, really uh, engage with them through the, through the texting action plan has been the best. I, I heard from my team that you have actually moved from like KW to EXP and now you're independent. And I'm I know this is a big like transition away from like uh, all the technology side, but I'm curious like as your business evolved, um, you know what was happening with those movements like between franchises. Uh, that's close, but well, I, <laughs> I started at Caldwell Banker because ah, I felt okay. like they had a really good training. Um, stayed Got there it. until 2008, and like I told you, that was 40 headaches, those listings. Yeah. So at that time, I went over to Remax. I uh, didn't take a single listing with me. Uh, you, I had all the buyer leads and stuff. Yep. Obviously, you end up picking up some of those listings when they expire out from, from Caldwell Banker. And uh, so Jeff and I partnered up shortly after... Uh, I joined Remax, and in 2011, we had two websites that were generating a lot of teams. We had a team of five of us. Our bills got a little uh, stout for a team. There were no team-friendly brokerages in 2011. As we looked, we had no interest of starting a company, but that's where that's where life took us. Um, back then, it was Beach Realty Group, and we ended up being about, I don't know, maybe 100 realtors in the Grand Strand area. Then we opened up in Greensboro, North Carolina. And uh, that's where Jeff's from and had a friend that was in that market and wanted what we're doing. So we had to drop the Beach Realty Group um, and we went with BRG. Well, it took us about six months to even figure out what that means. Um, As people are going to ask, so our marketing director, uh, uh, we came up with bold, reliable and groundbreaking, which basically sums us up. Well, Last week or a week and a half ago, we had our first conference. Now we're in five states. So we were in Charlotte, uh, had our first conference in Charlotte, and we have rebranded our whole company. Uh, this time, uh, it's here to stay and it's uh, Innovate uh, Real Estate is the name of our company now um, in five states. So I'm actually changing. If you go into brglistings.com is the name of say I'm getting my assistant. Chris is working with Real Geeks right now in the 15 MLSs that we have built onto the Real Geek site to get the documentation we need to switch over to innovatelistings.com is what the site's going to be called. That's excellent. So maybe digging into that a little bit, um, I, I kind of want to touch on the rebranding uh, element as well, because I think that's something that uh, scares a lot of people. But what was the biggest challenge, you know, moving away from the franchise and, and going independent? Am I, going to, am I still going to be able to get that listing? Yeah, I mean, that's what people is and people's uh, mentality a lot of times. But the reality is people uh, deal with you because they want to deal with you and you're the one that's going to be selling property. So we actually our businesses, Jeff and mine, both because we still sell um, has has increased uh, threefold from being from a franchise just opened up. And we feel that way as a company, too. As an individual, you can do that. But as a company, we can pivot very quickly. So when we, we decided to rebrand, we've been working on it for a year and a half just because you had some, you know, some federal uh, trademarks and some things like that that you want to make sure that you have in place. But other than, other than that, we could have did it in a week. Right. So it sounds like when you were new, the training inside the franchise world was really valuable. But then as you sort of developed your own portfolio of clients and your own lead sources, that it became 
going independent was was you know a good option how how do you advise people when they're you know when they're thinking about what to do well, if you're a new agent, I would definitely go somewhere with the training uh, where they have a mentor program. It's huge. Uh, for the first 10 years, we didn't have any of that. So we were just taking experienced agents. Um, uh, but, yeah, the, the, the mentor program, uh, having a set of, 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 tra- uh, of classes, we, you know, we have two. Like we have one that's three weeks of people learning how to open doors and sign listening agreements. And then we've got a 16 week that's more like the, you know, Tom Ferry, you know, doing do doing done boards or, you know, making phone calls or uh, writing notes to your mom or whatever about how successful you're going to be like all that. stuff. so, I mean, that's what's important when you're, when you get real into real estate, you know, you got to, you, you have to let people know that you're the professional and, and get, getting a mentor is huge with that. Have you been following any of the, uh, the NAR, uh, you know, thoughts, you know, futures of real estate, like, done any thinking about, you know, what, uh, what some of the new, um, you know, fallouts of the, of the lawsuit could be. I mean, we're ahead of that, but that's not my strong suit. We've got a team yep. of five brokers that say, uh, really engaged into that. So we're actually, as a company, we're having what they're calling a town hall to answer questions and help people move forward versus just putting it on a Facebook page and, you know, uh, you know, everyone's saying what their thoughts are and everyone gets in a negative mindset. Right. I, I, I feel that there's a there's always a spin on it. The, the real estate industry is always going to need a professional. Uh, I mean, that's that's my take on it. So I I look at, a, you know, a couple things, but not very much because if, if people can go down a rabbit hole really quick. Where are you focused? What are you, what are you thinking about? What are those couple of things? Well, the one that I watched, like Jared James, for example, with the, the XEO of uh, Remax, you know, people like that, they give you good insight uh, and a very positive mindset to, to what this what this can mean. Uh, we've already been working with attorneys for six months on uh, on, you know, what our policies and procedures look like as a company, uh, buyers agency agreements. What's that what that looks like? What needs to be in there? What needs to be taken out of there? Because uh, we've always relied on the state agreements, but not necessarily is that always going to be the best take. Gotcha. So buyer's agreement, which is now yours and not someone yeah. else's. Any other major changes happening inside your business? Uh, independent contractor agreements and the policies and procedures are probably the two biggest. Just making sure that the, the language in there is, is something that protects us, but, uh, but protects the, the agent as well. And then the other thing that we've really gotten big on, we've got a lot of big teams. So buttoning up our team agreements also, we've uh, been working on that over the last few months, just making sure that people have a bullet point to, to go by and then they can make an addendum if there's something different with their team versus how someone else might run theirs. Seems like you're, you've thought about this ahead of time, uh, you know, which, which is great. Like, do you think that creates a, a recruiting opportunity for you? Well, you know, for people that are like, you know, maybe experienced agents that are not necessarily happy with like maybe a brokerage that's falling behind, something like that. Yeah, I mean, we, we do. We, we, we use a, a model that we, we have level 10 meetings every week with the leadership. Now it's grown from uh, five of us originally to a uh, finance director and then a director of expansion. So, yeah, our, our, our uh, expansion director just came on. She's been doing it a long time with a company called Howard Hanna out of the Northeast. And then she came to Myrtle Beach, like a lot of people do, and started her second career with us. So she's really had a wealth of information. So she joined our leadership uh, a, a meeting right away right away but yeah just having the stuff in place to really support the agents support to be able to scale that was our biggest thing scaling and onboarding and those are the things that we've been focusing on for two years so we're we're in five states like 13 different markets and we're keeping it to the southeast right now you know tennessee georgia south carolina north carolina and florida our ultimate goal is to after those five states really get we get a good foothold there is to possibly moving to Virginia or Kentucky and, you know, five more states. And then, you know, we do the equity ownership as well. So about two years ago, we broke it up where Jeff and I are no longer the owners. We're just a majority shareholders. And then we also do revenue share. And, you know, our model is basically a five, four, three, two, one. And then we, we've had a programmers program, a back office system for us. And agents will have an agent portal, kind of like a, uh, what's the one that KV core has? It's a, um, it's just a back office portal for them. But a lot of these systems couldn't keep up with our rev share and stuff like that. So we we had some, uh, the guy that built my first WordPress site, his wife's our marketing director now, and she's put all her stuff up. 
but he's still on the back end working with Indian programmers building that building that uh that software for us to keep up with that. And then all the agents will have a agent portal with their whole dashboard, their business right there. That's awesome. That's uh, well, yeah. I, I mean, obviously the growth that you've experienced, you know, uh, is incredible. But I also like hearing that you know the team that you started with is still in the picture uh, and evolving with you. That that's also you know uh, very cool to hear. Yeah, her daughter just started with us at the beginning of the year. Whole family situation. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what haven't I asked you that uh, you know is interesting and unique about your business that you know you'd like to share? I think our culture is the biggest thing that, and I know a lot of companies say that, but when you, when you, when it comes down, you know, to it, our retention is probably our best thing. And that, that's, that's the important part of real estate. Anybody could be a revolving door. So when we decided to move into the different markets, what we look for is a, a good leader in those markets. And then we have a com- commission based, uh, structure for those leaders to thrive. So we're not just going and open brick and mortar there. We're giving that. Uh, that leader in that market an opportunity to, to, to have some ownership of that market. Touching on that, on that culture, you know, I know that as companies expand, a lot of times there's this feeling like, you know, they, they lose something or they, you know, uh, you know, growth can sometimes be, be the enemy of like maintaining the, like the great culture that, that caused the, you know, that original spark. How do you, how do you like make that culture contagious from location to location? Well, two of our two of our core values. Uh, one of them is growth minded. So, when you have uh, a realtor and you want to grow, for example, uh, Julianne DeForest was one of our agents on our team, and now she has a team of seven herself. So, when you show that into a culture, and then the other thing is the culture of generosity, where we, you know, we we share or lead by example, but we also share what we're doing. Like, you know, just having you know this call here, you know, sharing their own their own hidden secrets and. You know, we we all uh, whether ships sail better. How's that saying goes? Ships sail better with a higher tide. You're, all ships yeah. rise. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah. So we we've we've shown it, and I mean, our two other biggest markets are uh, Tampa down there and uh, Bradenton and stuff, and that's a uh, uh, we've got a good leader there, and then in Knoxville, Tennessee, we've got a really good leader there. Um, we're going to be growing very rapidly. We've been working uh, the last three months on the on the getting ready for our event. Now we're switching everything over. Matter of fact, right before this call, they went up and uh, changed our sign right out in front of this office I'm at now. So getting all that through to the end of, uh, to the beginning of May is when all of our systems like uh, will really be ramped out. Um, I've got to get with you guys to see how I can position these uh, leads. I'm getting in different markets to, uh, you know, if, if they're in Knoxville, how do I get that into a Knoxville agent? But when, when I was at Remax years ago, I, I would get a, a lead in Tennessee. And I didn't understand why that was. Now I understand because it's putting that piece together of when they do a search, when do you capture them? And then when you capture them, at what point do you find out if you're looking in Florida or if they're looking in Raleigh, North Carolina? This episode of Keeping It Real is brought to you by Real Geeks. Real Geeks is the all-in-one real estate sales and marketing technology platform that is designed to make real estate professionals more efficient. New for 2024, Real Geeks has four packages. The base package, which is the same platform that everyone's used to that starts at uh, $299, as well as three packages that include leads. So if you're looking to upgrade your technology and get leads, we've got something for everyone. All of the packages include SEO Fast Track, which is Real Geek's AI-enabled SEO tool, which builds out long tail, programmatically driven AI content for uh, your listing pages. The data coming off this has been great in terms of generating long tail traffic for our customers. You want to check this out, head over to realgeeks.com and tell them that you saw us on Keeping It Real. Hey, so this is this is a surprise double episode. Uh, you want to introduce yourself real fast? Uh, my name is Lisa Broussard. I'm the marketing director for what is now Innovate Real Estate. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, okay, real fast. Okay. What does it mean to be a marketing director inside Innovate Real Estate? Well, the last two months, it's really been a... It's, means you have to be crazy. (laughs) (laughs) What are you guys working on? No. So we, we, um, of course, just went through this big rebrand and we did a lot ahead of time. You know, we got a whole new marketing. We provide a lot of marketing support for our agents. So our agents have um, a whole marketing website with 
all the templates for every single thing they could possibly want, need, use, including a full social media calendar every month of of things that they can pull and customize to their own name, face, and that kind of stuff. So instead of having to go out and get a um, subscription to something, we do that for them every month. We have lots of social media templates. We have listing presentations, buyer presentations, lots of business. So we do all that. So we did all that ahead of time. Just getting through the rebrand, we made sure that everything that they had in the past, they have all brand new um, with all the new stuff on it. So it was fun. Do you have an in-house design team or are you working with like external external resources? No, we are the in-house design team. You are the in-house. Okay. So you got to touch everything, every single thing. (laughs) Every single thing. Yep. So I have a, I have one person that works with me. Um, So together we, we do all of that. And I wouldn't have it any other way right now. I think when you're going through a rebrand like this and the whole image of your company is changing, you want to touch everything. You want to see everything. You want to make sure it's exactly what you had in mind in your vision. Sounds like we need to do an episode on real estate rebranding. Let's do it. I would love to hear everything about uh, what you guys have been doing. Yeah, I would love to do that. Yeah, because we just went, we went full on. We had a, and it was so great because this week with everything that came out, our messaging that we had made ahead of time for the new company was, um, we're not just changing the name, we're changing the game. We're ready to provide a, a, yeah, I mean, how great was that? The timing just, you know, um, we're working on elevated real estate experiences, uh, an elevated real estate transaction, you know, more transparency, um, more communication, more education. And it was like the branding gods were just smiling down on us because it all came out right at the greatest time. I'm the, the marketing VP here at Real Geeks. Uh, And so I can nerd out on marketing stuff for hours. Uh, But it sounds like you and your husband have been in the game for a really long time. How do you stay current on all the things, both digital marketing and real estate? Like, Um, I think you just count on a lot of people to help you do that. So, of course, there's no way that I can stay 100 percent current. You know, the the one hire I made is a much younger person than I am. So (laughs) and you have to. I mean. The, the new generations, they, they think differently. They have different requirements. They use tools and apps differently. They're the things that are relevant to them. And we try to stay relevant. So you're, you know, if you're, if you're stuck as a 60 year old marketing person, you've got to know that it's time to bring in younger people, people that can fill in gaps that you just may not be able to fill in. Awesome. So what are some of those biggest changes? Like, apps, like I'm guessing like Instagram, TikTok, that kind of thing, uh, compared um, to. Yeah. yeah. Tick the apps, TikTok, um, Snapchat. So th- those are, th- I, I, I don't even know how to log into our accounts at this point. Thank goodness. <laughs> I have someone who, who really, really does. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I never imagined myself to be the person that has to keep up with all of that. So it's brilliant that, you know, our company has, let us bring in the people who can do that and are much better at it than than I would ever be. I have the ideas and visions, but they are so good at putting it into play. And our realtors feed us a lot of content. You know, I mean, we have realtors that are absolutely phenomenal on some of those on TikTok or Snapchat or those kind of apps. And, you know, we're, we're just lucky that we have them to feed us content too. We're probably getting into a whole part of an, another episode I'd love to do, but like, you know, as a marketing team, it sounds like you're providing, you know, maybe templates or content itself for them to use on their social media. But like, where does that, where does that meet in the middle of what you produce versus what they produce? So m- my whole philosophy is that, you know, uh, social media only works if you're consistent. And so we provide some stuff that keeps them consistent and doesn't mean they have to be full-time social media marketers. But the stuff they put out on their own, their unique stuff, their stuff that's personal, the videos that they're making themselves, that's the golden ticket. You know, I can put out a bunch of junk and not junk, but I can just put out standard real estate content like all the other um, subscription services are putting out. But that does not ever, no matter how good I am, does not hold a candle to them take picking up their phone and making good content that is personal and raw and authentic. And that, that's just what I tell them. Like this is the stuff that we give you is great to keep you consistent. You can go in and schedule for a month so that you have something going out, but, sh- but the, the prize 
comes when you start making your own content. All right. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Lisa. That was excellent. That was a killer episode with a lot of great knowledge bombs. Uh, we really want to thank the audience. Like we really appreciate you guys listening and, uh, interacting with us down in the comments. We read all of those comments, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, and definitely appreciate the thumbs up and the subscribes you give us really helps us get these episodes out here until next time. Talk to you later.